Downtown Monroe announced the expansion of the Federal Historic District, adding many new properties to the Federal Historic District. Michael Eccles, Monroe City Council Chairman, was on hand to talk about the expansion further. I'd like to welcome everybody here to the uh, Ackle Auction House. Uh, obviously, inclement weather has driven us inside, but we have a great historic building to do this presentation today. I'm Michael Eccles. I'm uh, a developer in downtown Monroe and also represent the Monroe City Council. And it's my pleasure today to uh, make a formal announcement of an expansion of uh, our federal historic district here in Monroe. Uh, about a year, year and a half ago, uh, some private developers uh, began to work with Louisiana Trust for Historic Preservation to look at opportunities for growing our historic district to create a larger inventory of uh, tax credit properties throughout downtown Monroe. Uh, over the last several years, you've seen numerous buildings being repurposed and put back into commerce, many of which were vacant. Uh, a lot of those, again, coming back as residential, retail, and then commercial office space. Uh, but it came abundantly clear that our, our federal historic tax district was kind of limited and uh, we needed to add some additional properties to that. Uh, fortunately, we've been able to work with some highly qualified people that uh, understand the federal historic tax districts, uh, the network with the National Park Service, and uh, we were able to, to work with and retain a gentleman by the name of Brian Davis, who's the executive director of Louisiana Trust for Historic Preservation, but also does uh, private consulting work in the preservation field. And I'm gonna invite him up just to make a couple of remarks and tell you a little bit more about the, uh, the federal expansion. And then I'm gonna uh, ask that the mayor come up and talk a little bit more about what this means to our city to increase the boundaries of our federal historic tax district. So, Mr. Davis. Thank you, Michael. Um, my name is Brian Davis. Uh, my day job is as executive director of Louisiana Trust for Historic Preservation. We're a statewide nonprofit that works with endangered historic buildings and finding, getting those put back into active use again. Uh, and we've been doing this for about 15 months now all across the state. Uh, as a side project, I worked with Michael for about a, the past year, uh, updating the existing National Register District uh, and then expanding it, basically doubling in size the uh, National Register District. With the National Register District, it is not, there are no restrictions along with that. It is only honorary. Uh, the worst that can happen is if somebody comes in and changes uh, their building so much or the, the uh, district loses too many of its contributing buildings, then uh, they could, it could be declassified, but there are no further restrictions on National Register listings. Uh, but it was really interesting. The original uh, nomination for uh, the downtown went over to about Desire Street, uh, down to about I-20, and then back to uh, St. Matthews, and that was to the river. That was kind of the bounds of the rough bounds of the district. Uh, and this was about, uh, there was about 55, um, 50 or 55 buildings that were still uh, existent that were in that. We had to update that listing though in order to add to it. So I had to go back through and look at the uh, changes that have been made to those buildings since 1986, over the past 30 years since it was listed, uh, get those uh, updated. And then we, we looked to the, to the north, uh, up to uh, the Children's Museum, uh, and then all the way down to where Desire crosses the railroad, meets the railroad track. So this is the expansion along Washington Street as well. But the, uh, the guidelines, the boundaries of the guidelines were uh, kind of helped drawn by uh, Louisiana Division of Historic Preservation by their staff, kind of uh, helping us uh, along those edges and stuff, what, what was included. So um, I, one of the, I think probably the best things for Monroe uh, and this expansion is the, uh, the tax uh, credit uh, opportunities that, that lie with those uh, buildings in, in the, uh, the uh, area. So um, it's an exciting time. So look forward to seeing the more progress in downtown Monroe. And Brian will be available for questions afterwards if you guys have that. Uh, obviously, this is a pretty large economic development opportunity for us. And uh, so I'd like to welcome the mayor up to talk a little bit about you know, what it means to the city of Monroe and uh, what this means for the vision of downtown. Thank you, Chairman Eccles. Uh, I mentioned last week when we had the Riverwalk expansion, all the exciting things going on in the city of Monroe. Uh, the Riverwalk expansion, the River Market, the cultural dist district and a number of other things with the private developers, business leaders, and just all over the city of Monroe, downtown, you see so much going on. Of course, this historical district is huge for the city of Monroe. We appreciate the fact that this district will be extended, will be doubled, which is significant as well, which means that our potential business owners uh, who's wanting to develop downtown will 
see a significant savings as it relates to some of the investment that they'll make downtown. So thank you, Chairman Eccles, and also as well as all the others who have worked on this project. It's huge. I really want to thank our planning urban development, Mr. Fisher, Ms. Poré, and all of our staff members and working with them to make this possible. So congratulations, and this is another reason to be Monroe proud. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I also want to echo the Mayor's uh, comments. Uh, planning and urban development, as well as the Heritage Preservation Commission, are integral in this because, one, their job is to oversee these districts. Uh, state districts, federal districts, and ensure that we comply with uh, some of the regulation and some of the uh, aesthetic improvements that happen throughout the district and just make sure they fall within the Department of the Interior standards. So we do appreciate them and their efforts to uh, make sure we, we, we work to maintain that historical district. Uh, one thing that Brian may have not mentioned, there are a number of buildings that are added. There are roughly 50 new buildings new old buildings that are within the boundaries now that weren't there before. So we have well over 100 historic properties throughout the commercial historic tax credit district now that would qualify for both federal and state historic tax credits. So it's an exciting day for us here at Monroe. Uh, again, I want to thank everybody for coming out today. And uh, if you guys have any questions, we'd be happy to entertain those questions.